Since the early 2000s, a congressman from Hawaii has made it a top priority to help aging Filipino war veterans in the U.S. reunite with their loved ones in the Philippines. Eagle News correspondent Alfred Asenas from the EBC Hawaii Pacific Bureau has this exclusive interview. Congressman Ed Case explains why he has taken great interest in helping families in the Philippines to be reunited with their war veteran loved ones already in their twilight years. One issue that rose to the top pretty fast for me in that representation uh, was that uh, with our Fil Filipino World War II veterans who had fought, of course, incredibly bravely during World War II, uh, had, had come to this country um, uh, at, at, in, in part as a recognition for their services, uh, the, uh, them and their spouses, and then family members could not join them uh, because of this long wait. And the fact of the matter was uh, the veterans were getting elderly, um, they needed care, they should be with their families, uh, they needed the care of their families, and yet their families could not reunify with them. And so it was in that period in my own service that I introduced the original uh, bill, uh, which was to allow uh, for expedited immigration consideration for the families, the, the close families, uh, primarily adult children of Filipino World War II veterans. Um, and I didn't succeed in, in passing that actual bill during that service, but of course later on um, that was achieved um, through the parole process, which is a, a, a special um, um, proceeding available to the administration to essentially um, fast track uh, the immigration um, situation uh, in humanitarian areas. So in other words, one could gain humanitarian parole uh, for a family member uh, in emergency situations uh, to, to care for their family member in the United States without having to wait all of those years on a temporary basis. So it was not a very, it wasn't a permanent solution, but it was a, it was a solution that was available then. The Hawaii congressman also described the challenges he faced in keeping the program alive and available especially during the Trump administration. The Trump administration decided to terminate the parole program. Uh, this was about uh, two years ago, and I, I felt that that was dead wrong. So um, bringing you up to date, um, they proceeded with it anyway, but they did not fully implement the revocation of the parole program. Uh, and neither to this date has it been revoked. So it remains in place, uh, folks that are um, here under parole to take care of their elderly um, uh, uh, family members can stay here. Uh, but when the Biden administration uh, came into office, uh, we urged uh, President Biden's uh, new administration to to reverse the prior decision to, to revoke the parole program. Um, and we're awaiting their decision. And thus far, um, the federal government has not moved forward with uh, that revocation. So. You know, we hope that what that means is that they're, re they're reconsidering it. Now, one thing I should note is that uh, President Biden um, has proposed uh, his U.S. Citizenship Act, which is a major a bill to reform our immigration system. And the bill that uh, both Senator Hiro and I have introduced into the last Congress uh, uh, is part of uh, massive measure that's before Congress today. So we've made headway in terms of educating uh, folks on what this is all about. Although Mr. Case did not specify the costs that applicants might incur, he did assure that the federal government will do everything possible to assist veterans and their families to be reunited no matter the cost. While the costs of administering the parole program are not, I don't think, uh, significant costs. They're they're more they're more administrative. They're they're the cost of uh, you know processing a an application for for parole, um, and there it's been relatively limited in terms of the number of applications for use of this program. I think that um, again you know uh, there aren't that many World War II veterans left, and I think the parole program since it started has had only about 600 applications of which 300 plus have been um, accepted. 
And so that's not a big cost. Reporting from Honolulu, Hawaii, I'm Alfred Asenas, Eagle News. We live in interesting times.